Now this is elegant. I'm driving one of the most exclusive Range Rovers Land Rovers ever made. It's called the Range Rover Lindley. Right now there are only four in the world and they all come on a made to order basis. But that's only part of our product story. Hi, I'm John Burgess and welcome to Cross Country. The exciting product news for mid-year 2000 includes three more very exclusive Range Rovers. The automotive press got a peek at them and heard the discovery story. Series 2's new Duragrain interior passed inspection. Land Rover is now a part of the premier automotive group owned by the Ford Motor Company. We'll hear from Ford President Jack Nasser, new Land Rover President Bob Dover, Land Rover North America President Howard Mosier, and our retailers. When our friends at the State Off-Road Vehicle Recreation Area in Hollister Hills, California announced a 25th anniversary celebration, we came up with a birthday present. Also in this edition, we'll make some stops to congratulate the winners of the Land Rover Trophy. Travel to Jordan with the Land Rover Adventures Program on a trip through the sands of time. Find out how Land Rover helped out at the Belmont Stakes. And take a look at the first TV spots from our new agency, GSDNF. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's go. It's official. Land Rover is now a member of the Ford Motor Company. As part of the premier automotive group, Land Rover joins British Marks, Aston Martin, and Jaguar with Volvo of Sweden and American-based Lincoln. Shortly after the announcement in March, Jack Nasser, president of Ford, said this to the press. We think that it's a very healthy ongoing business, uh, but it does uh, require not only the initial investment that we've made to, for the acquisition, but, but obviously to um, uh, keep the products modern and fresh, expand the product range, because we would like to do that, particularly in, in terms of the attractiveness of the products to the U.S. market. Land Rover sales have been about 30,000 units in the U.S. market, and uh, we feel that, that is, uh, there's huge potential there for improvement. This new direction is a very positive move for us and now brings Land Rover Canada back into the company. Of course, with this new direction comes lots of questions. And our retailers met on the West Coast and here in Washington, D.C. to learn more about what the alliance with Ford will mean to them and their customers. Now, for the first time in years, beyond the memory of many of us, we have Land Rover people managing our business in the U.K. We still have the same commitment to the Land Rover way and to our center philosophy. And we still have the challenge of facing more and more new competition coming into the market and behaving just like we do, or trying to. What's changed for the better is the new commitment that we have from Ford Motor Company and our new management at Land Rover worldwide. One of our biggest challenges is going to be rebuilding the organization and particularly rebuilding it within the new world of Ford and the synergies and the cooperations that we're looking for there. Ford's committed to that goal, and you have my renewed commitment to it as well. Land Rover's new president, Bob Dover, has a strong background with all three British marks in the premier automotive group, and he recognizes the importance of each brand maintaining its individuality. Firstly, and I said at the beginning, Land Rover will be run as an independent, standalone business, fully supported by Ford. The leadership team aren't going to be asked anything about Jaguar or Lincoln or Mercury. They're going to be asked about Land Rover. We'll only be judged, we'll only be rewarded on Land Rover performance. Our mission is to be a global, diverse family with a proud heritage, passionately committed to providing products and services that improve people's lives. So welcome to the Ford family. It's going to be great working with you. I'm really looking forward to it. The team are tremendously excited, and uh, I'll share some of that with you later on. Thank you very much. One third of Land Rover retailers already sell brands which are part of their premier automotive group. They spoke of their experiences. I'm very excited about Ford's purchase of, of Land Rover, and I know what they've done for um, the Jaguar dealers the product. It was amazing. They took Jaguar from 
you know, we like to say from worst to first when it comes to JD Power and quality, which is an amazing feat in itself. It was a slow process, and that's exactly what it was, starting from the production floor. It was processes. They enabled the people in the plants at Browns Lane to build a car better. Before Ford came along, Jaguar was a small company with limited resources. Um, they bought a company that was in trouble financially, and um, their cars, although they were beautiful, were known for their quality problems. I wonder now how we used to sell them, because <laughs> you'd, you'd stand in the drive-thru and you'd see all these people coming in with all these problems, but we sold them. Jaguar, as we all know, has disappointed customers in the past, but there's been a passion for the product that people say, I love the car and I want to come back. And since Ford's involvement, they come back now because the car is nearly flawless. They turned a basic two-car line of cars, which is very familiar with Land Rover, into a multi-level product line, and they've made it so you have a hot product. They're a good sh shepherd of, of, of their assets, and, and I don't think they'll do anything to endanger those things that they invest in. Ford allowed the culture of Jaguar to survive, which enhanced the brand value, and they, they will do the same for, for um, Land Rover, and I'm very confident about that. If they do half what they did with Jaguar, um, I think it'll be a great success for all of us. Land Rover and Jaguar are very similar. They have their own culture. Um, they're always known as, as beautiful cars. We've got in a, in a retail organization a passion for a product that I think is, is probably second to none in the automobile business. We've done very well working a boutique or a niche market with these cars and you know, advertising and alternative marketing and we've just done wonderful things with, but with the increased um, focus that Ford can give us and, and the backing that Ford's going to give us, I really see you know, unlimited horizons for us. We need the best quality that there is and that will, that's what we'll, Ford will bring along. Thanks, Sherry, Brian, and Mark, for sharing your insight. There are some exciting times just ahead. Now, let's take a look at the news on the product front. For mid-year 2000, both Discovery Series 2 and Range Rover have new appointments to get customers to take another look. Range Rover has four limited editions for those people wanting something even more distinctive and exclusive. This is the Range Rover Lindley. It is the creation of David Lindley, designer of extremely high quality furniture. We visited with him at his store in London. All of the pieces that we make are made to be used. They're not made as, as museum pieces, although they could be of that quality. The essence of good design is understanding what your client wants and really getting the most out of what you've been asked to make. Ever since I was a child, we've always had a Land Rover around. So to me, it's always been in our sort of language to understand how they've been put together. I tore out a few photographs from old magazines of oh, classic Rover. cars and the yeah, comfortable yeah, interiors that sort of emanated around the 50s and 60s. The whole point of it was to be a very pure and understated design. The first thing you see on the outside is how shiny it is. It's very, very beautifully done. It's a subtle detail. And I think the whole car is a very subtle car. When you open the door, it's a very understated, luxurious feel. It's the combination of the texture, the smell, the touch. It feels very luxurious, but without being showy at all. It's very minimal in its impact. The steering wheel, for instance, it's a very simple wooden wheel, but it's black. And it has studs on the top and the bottom, which reflects sort of 60s kind of feel to it. Everything that you touch has a wonderful feel about it, very cool. The way that you change gear, all those sort of things that you actually use all the time. If it's something I'm designing for myself, then the quality has to be absolutely superb. The Lindley is a good example of exclusivity that can be achieved with Range Rover. To date, we are working on possible plans to market this vehicle in North America. The year 2000 marks the 30th anniversary of Range Rover. When it was introduced in 1970, it immediately set the standard for four-wheel drive vehicles, offering car-like ride and handling and uncompromising off-road capabilities. For over 30 years, this icon has undergone many engineering and appointment upgrades. And this milestone is marked with a 30th anniversary limited edition. This Range Rover features a light stone beige interior and classic green leather seats. 
Burl Maple accents the door panels, dashboard, and center console. Only 200 of these vehicles will be built. Pull. This limited edition is the Holland & Holland Range Rover. With design cues from the world's finest manufacturer of exclusive firearms. We spoke with Roger Mitchell of the London-based Holland & Holland Limited. The actual leather, we describe it as, um, as, as dark brown saddle leather. Okay. It's a very traditional type of leather that you'll see both for shooting and for horse riding. When you look at all the wood trim here in the cockpit, it's an oil-finished burr walnut. And it's the same sort of finish that we use on all our gun stocks. And I think it gives a, um, a very, very nice, stylish effect in the car. On the door walnut trim, there were these little engraved four-end diamonds, which is a very distinctive feature of guns of the type that we make. I understand that in addition to these interior treatments and the amenities that the Holland Holland Limited Edition is also distinguished by a unique exterior color. It's called Tinton Green, and Tinton being the name of an abbey in England's West Country. When you're outside and you've got the sun on it like you have today, you get these wonderful bluey-green effects. It's a very singular color. Everyone who I've shown the vehicle to, uh, both in America and um, in the UK, has, I think, been delighted with the presentation, so congratulations. <laughs> the fourth limited edition Range Rover was designed to celebrate Land Rover's history of exploration and adventure in Africa. It's called the Range Rover Rhino. This all-gray model is finished in a Bonatti gray paint with a Rhino-textured dark and light contrasting leather interior. 125 Rhinos will be stampeding into the U.S. this year. All of these Range Rovers were unveiled to the press at the New York Auto Show in April. We also took the occasion to announce to the press the big news for Series 2, and in true Land Rover style, Discovery model manager Kim McCullough broke the news. Introducing uh, one of the toughest new skins on the planet, it's called Duragrain. The iguana, his name is Barkley, and he's our tough skin mascot for this afternoon. This uh, will replace cloth and become our new entry model, the Discovery SD, or with the optional seven seat package, it will be the Discovery SD7. But more importantly than the interior itself, is the fact that we'll, we'll come with a new entry price, and this will go a long way towards bringing more people into the Land Rover family, and more importantly, getting on those shopping lists. And that wraps up our product story. Now, let's get out of the city and into a place where Land Rovers feel right at home. Hollister Hills State Vehicle Recreation Area in California has played host to numerous Land Rover events over the years. Now, Land Rover is repaying that favor in a special way. In 1975, the state of California recognized the growing popularity of off-roading and opened the first of six off-highway vehicle recreation parks at Hollister Hills. Hollister Hills is about 6,000 acres. We've got about 3,000 acres right now to open to the public and there's about 100 miles of roads and trails. Any off-highway vehicle that operates on public land in California is required to have a green sticker, motorcycle, ATV, um, and four-wheel drive vehicles. All that money goes into a pot for the uh, green sticker program. Part of my duties, uh, you know, law enforcement, uh, public safety. Part of the duties also is conservation of our natural resources. Been here uh, over 15 years and I really enjoy it. Go! Land Rover and Hollister Hills have shared a long history together. For starters, the Camel Trophy Trials were held here in 1996. And here at Hollister, it's such a controlled environment. Uh, we could pretty much put in any task that we needed. We had the help of the park and the maintenance crew here to build unique pieces of terrain to test the guys against. So we, we built an autocross course in, the, um, in the, what they call the terrain park here. We've done product launches here, new vehicle launches to the press, um, sales training for sales guides to the centers, off-road driving techniques. Hollister also provides great opportunities for Land Rover owners. The Bay Area dealers do a number of wheels events here, so we, we get a lot of Land Rover customers through here. This gives them an opportunity to, I guess, get their uh, tires muddy and uh, find out what it's all about. Land Rover felt this relationship should be celebrated. What better occasion than the 25th anniversary of the park? 
So Bob Burns, along with his team, came up with the perfect plan. And thank you to Land Rover. Oh, a couple months ago, I contacted Bob Burns. He brought up the 25th anniversary of the park, and I said, um, you guys have just been such a great help for, for Land Rover. Is there anything we can do to return the favor? I told Bob that it really wasn't that important as the money issue, because we're, we've got the money to, to do projects. And jokingly, he said, well, you can give us a car. Bob really liked that idea. So we have. But we thought it'd be a great place to get Discovery exposed and say, you know, it's, it's not just for going to the shopping mall. It's actually a workhorse, back to the lineage of Land Rovers. This is where they grew up, out in a working environment, whether it's a police force, which we would see here through the Rangers, out off-road, helping maybe lesser vehicles get free, um, and just show the vehicle in its true environment. Being a park ranger, I've got to get to backcountry accidents in a hurry a lot of times and you know be able to do it safely it's going to better serve the uh, off-road public i was amazed on how well the vehicle worked it's a little nicer than uh, what we anticipated the, the two skylights the leather interior and custom sound system uh, it's just a you know real sweet vehicle and the company just has a, a good philosophy on responsible four-wheel drive use you really don't see any other companies in this part of California that take time giving schools on safe use of the vehicle and also responsible use of the vehicle. Land Rover's way ahead of anybody else out there as far as equipment and also their responsibility to the sport. Let's take a break now and make some short stops. Asheville, North Carolina. The folks at Land Rover Asheville were honored recently as recipients of the Land Rover Trophy for their excellent performance in 1999. Land Rover Asheville President Dr. Jack Frazier and Center Manager Roger Miller accepted the trophy on behalf of the 12-member Land Rover Asheville team. The Center opened its doors in January 1998. The Land Rover Trophy Mark of Distinction is awarded to the Land Rover Centers that outperform in 16 critical areas. Congratulations to the Land Rover Asheville team. Belmont, New York. And off the Belmont Stakes is the third jewel of the Triple Crown of horse racing. This year, Land Rover went to the races with the camera support vehicle for ABC Sports. This Discovery Series 2 was used to provide unique camera angles from inside the track. This year's winner, Commendable, with a winning time of 2 minutes and 31 seconds. Commendable takes the Belmont! And now, a word from our sponsors. This ad is the creation of GSDNM, Land Rover's new agency. Reaction has been very positive and gratifying. GSDNM has received 3,500 emails praising the concept. Congratulations! The campaign exemplifies the Land Rover spirit, showing everyday people exhibiting everyday acts of courage. Always be yourself. Amman, Georgia. This was the launch site for an eight-day Land Rover Adventures trip called the Sands of Time. Trips like this and others all over the world are available exclusively to Land Rover owners. On this special trip, Australian and American journalists were given the opportunity to witness the performance of Land Rover vehicles in this most inhospitable terrain. And they got a better understanding of what our owners experience when they sign up for a Land Rover adventure. The tour stopped at historic sites from biblical times. In the ancient city of Petra, visitors followed the same route walked by Roman soldiers 2,000 years ago. The locals call this the Cosnia, or treasury. It is one of the best preserved sites within the ancient city. Summer's moving right along and we're already anticipating Trek 2000. Rumor has it that Bob Burns has chosen a site which is absolutely perfect for a tough Trek challenge. Look for the announcement in an upcoming issue of Centerlines. Teams are already training for the long day of exercises designed to test physical endurance, mechanical knowledge, driving skills, and even Land Rover history. Competition is very fierce and many trials will be decided on the final event. 
the Trek Test Drive. Teams can expect some tough tests devised by Bob Burns and his expert crew of Land Rover driving instructors. While the New York Auto Show has its merits for showcasing our products to the press, the Greenbrier is even better. Not only does it reflect the lifestyles of our owners, it's a great place to brag about what a Land Rover can do. And seeing is believing, and that's what we did for journalists, drawing a line in the mud. A line in the mud is kind of an analogy for how competitive this marketplace is. Kim McCullough, Discovery Series 2 model manager, introduced the new Series 2 SD, emphasizing its price point and value-added features. Before getting behind the wheel, they witnessed the extraordinary capabilities of Series 2's traction control. This was a good introduction to some off-roading on the Greenbrier's driving school course. So you're setting the car up, figuring on what's going to happen. All right, so keep on going. And then it was Range Rover's turn in the spotlight, with a Concor celebrating Range Rovers in North America. The collection included the original and the 10th anniversary editions of the Great Divide Expedition, 1997 Range Rover Trek vehicle, and 1995's last Range Rover Classic. A line in the mud generated good press coverage for Land Rover. Look for stories in print and on the internet. And finally, We'd like to close this edition of Cross Country with one more comment made by Bob Dover, which left Landover retailers very enthusiastic. When asked about his vision for the future of the Defender, he had this to say. Let me stand up. I feel really strongly about this, so excuse me for doing this. But the, the Defender is the source of all of the Land Rover product. Uh, for me, it's the absolute icon. It's the unstoppable 4x4 vehicle in the world, number two. The Defender shape is recognizable by anyone. Even a child can draw it. With six lines on a piece of paper, you can draw a Defender. And we own that. And it seems bordering on the criminal not to have a Defender something in, in the biggest SUV market in the world. If you agree, and we can make a business case, there's nothing I'd like to do more than to have something with youth appeal and something that would also appeal to an older group. But I think it's really important if we can get back into that market. So I'd like a show of hands as to who would be interested in, in that sort of product. If we do it, it has to be the ultimate in performance. And that would take us back to our roots and our heritage in a very neat way. Well, that's it for this edition of Cross Country. We'll see you next time. Yeah.